Now I would like to add two vectors graphically. Say I have vector A and I, other, and I have another vector B. Now the great thing about vectors is, remember, they have two properties, magnitude and direction. So all I care to define vectors is to define those two properties perfectly. And I don't need anything else. That means if I take this vector A, and uh, now I give you this, and let's say you take your ruler and you measure the length of vector A, and then you measure the length of vector C, and then you pick a current system, tuk -tuk, and then you measure the angle of vector A with the protractor based on this particular current system S, and if you use the exact same current system S and you measure the angle of your vector C and you realize, oh, they have the same angle, oh, they have the same length, then hello, A and C are the same. Right? Because those two properties defining entirely this concept are the same. Therefore, those two vectors are the same. So, the nice thing about vectors e is that we can just move them around. So, let's say you want to add two vectors. We're going to pick a current system. I want to add A and B together. First method. Take A, you plot it from the origin of your current system. Then you're going to grab B. Now again, the nice thing about vectors is you can just move them around. So this vector A is the same as this one, as long as the length and the direction hasn't been altered. And then you grab vector B, and you're going to plot it from the origin of your current system as well. And if you want to add A and B, define as uh, vector C, then you will draw a line par parallel to B going through the end of A, and the line parallel to the vector A going through the end of B, and the intersection of those two lines will give you the end of vector C. Okay? That's one method. This method shows us clearly that addition of vector commute. Whether you add B to A or A to B, you end up to the same position. So that's the method that uh, you are free to use, uh, but I would suggest uh, not to use, uh, because uh, it's restrictive. It only works for two vectors. If now you need to add three vectors, then you're toast. So let's look at a method that will allow us to add as many vectors as we need, or like. So let's say I have vector A, and I would like to add uh, vector B. And pff, since we had it, let's add vector C. I'm going to pick a current system. I know that the addition is cumulative, therefore I don't care about the order, but I'm going to pick one as my starting point. Uh, I'm going to pick A, sorry. I'm going in order A, B, C. But again, practice on your own and uh, persuade yourself that you could start with C and then B and then A, you will end up with the same vector. So I'm just going to start with vector A. I'm going to plot A from the origin of my current system. Book. Okay, uh, imagine really hard that they're the same. And then instead of plotting B from my origin, I will draw B from the end of A. So I will kind of imagine that I have a little current system right here, centered at the end of A. And this is from this imaginary current system that will plot B. So from there, I will plot B. Oh, I'm going to add up with zero. Okay, imagine that B, long. Okay. And then similarly, as I add C, I'm going to imagine a current system centered at the end of B, and then plot C from B. So instead of plotting all your vector from the same point, you will plot them one at the top head and tails of each other. So that the addition vector A plus B plus C will be starting from A, going all the way up to where C ends. Let's call it D. D will be your vector addition A plus B plus C. Okay? This is the most general method. This is the one I would strongly suggest that you use. 
and then once you have vector d then you can take a protractor measure this angle at 180 take a ruler and uh, pick a scale tick, 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 and then measure the length of the vector d okay so that's pretty straightforward uh, pretty easy to add vector uh, graphically when you're being asked to add vectors and you're being given vectors uh, and it's meant for you to do it uh, in component notation you know feel free to draw it sketch it graphically because at least you have a feel about where uh, your resultant vector is going then as you calculate it then you can check now let's do some uh, jargon here if I have a vector A and I add it to a vector B, any vector, and I want to define this vector sum by another vector, let's say C. This vector C is defined as what we call a resultant vector. It's the result of adding all the other vectors. Okay. There's another vector that I would like to define. For me to define it, I will go back to this equation and uh, do some manipulation. The same way as you move a scalar across an equal sign, you change its sign. So similarly, this vector. I can move my C on the other side and end up with this. Right? So if you have vector A, vector minus A is the exact same vector with the same length but opposite direction. Now this is technically this. I have a vector A, I'm adding a vector C to which I add a vector which is defined as minus C. So let's call it D. Okay, so this is the same as A plus B plus D is equal to zero. Right? I'm just moving my C around and redefining minus C. So if we have A plus B, we know that we get C. Okay? And this is a non zero vector. If you move the C on the other side, you end up with negative C. And if we define it as a vector D, then this vector D really is the one that, if we add it to A and B, gives us a zero vector. So it's like A, B, and going back to the same point. This is what we call a zero vector. So really, the vector D is the one that we need to add to the vector sum a and b such that the sum of all those vector is equal to zero and this vector d is nothing else than the opposite of the resultant vector this vector d is known as the equilibrant vector which is the vector needed to reach what we call equilibrium. I would like to introduce this concept here because it will come back to us uh, soon. Let's say, example, you are pulling with a force in this direction, which can be represented by a force. So this is telling us that you're pulling in this direction with this magnitude. Let's say somebody else is pulling in this direction with this magnitude. Obviously, the object which is attached to both forces, or imagine their string, will have a tendency to go in the upper left direction of our board. If you would like to maintain that object, which is being tied up by those two forces A and B, where it is, so that it's not being moved towards the up upper left area of your board, but it stays right there, then you need to compensate those two forces by a force of exact magnitude and direction. So obviously you know that roughly that force must be around here. That's the one we call equilibrium. So if you're given a force A and a force B, you know that this system 
which is subjected by those two forces, represented by those two vectors, will have a tendency to go in the upper left direction. If you want to prevent this to happen, and make sure that your system stays where it is, or in other words, stays in equilibrium, then you want to add a third vector, or a third force, in the opposite direction as the resultant force of A and B. So if you add A and B, oh, oh well, you should be here, right? This is your resultant vector C, if you add A and B. You know that if you add another vector D, which has the exact same length as the resultant vector C, but in opposite direction, then the sum of all these vectors would be zero. That is, if you plot A, and then you plot B, and then you plot D, you will go back to the same point. That's how we define equilibrium vectors. So the relationship between equilibrium and resultant is this. When you see this, you know that those two vectors C and D's have the exact same magnitude. But because of this negative sign, you know that they are parallel and in opposite direction. 